Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. We want to welcome you to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana show. Today, we have a very special guest, as many of our guests are, and this is a very special lady, and by the name of Margaret Sapora Jones. Margaret has many, many talents, and we are going to learn so much from her. So, Florence. Yes, sir, and um, Sapora, we are are excited to have you as our special guest today. Um, now, you're a subscriber to NFB Newsline, aren't you? Yes, I am. I've been a subscriber for about um, eight or nine years now. All right, now, what's your favorite magazine? Um, honestly, I, I like the gardening and um, cooking. All right. Okay. Yeah. You know, they have that best recipes uh, magazine. That one is a really good. It's got a lot of great information. Now, um, when you use your NFP Newsline, do you have a preference as to what tool is, works best for you? Well, actually, um, I used to use my Newsline primarily on my Victor Reader stream. And, um, you know, because it allowed me to, you know, take it into the kitchen, go through the recipes and things like that. But um, recently I was on a conference call and they were um, updating people on different parts of Newsline. And I learned some new features that I was able to use um, using it on my iPhone. So um, recently I've been trying to learn the uh, platform on my iPhone so I can actually copy and paste and use some of the resources that way. And you know what else um, we have? We, we also have it on, um, I'm, I'm on a car, a lady um, right now. <laughs> she's so close to me. But I have found that I, you know, it's cooking in the kitchen. You can actually get a recipe from her and she'll give you step by step also. Just FYI. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we'd like to welcome you to the show today, support. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, and that one feature that you were talking about is where uh, you can save an article from the, any publication uh, straight to your inbox and use that uh, for references uh, for later. Uh, students love to use that uh, feature as well. Um, you know, the job search feature, the weather. And uh, I tell you, we really need the weather because uh, we've had some storms up and through here. Oh. The, I know where you're at. Uh, you know, I know you've had some weather as well. So we're going to take a short pause for the calls, and we're going to come right back with Miss Sapora Jones. Stay tuned. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind, and we read NFB Newsline. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. Dad, you read Jerusalem Post too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free. Welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana with our guest, Ms. Sapora Jones. And I am excited about having her here, so let's get this show on the road. 
All right, and I'm excited as well. And Sephora, now you are currently staying in Alabama? Correct. Okay, I what part of Alabama? Of um, right now I'm in Dothan, Alabama. It's a, it's a little small town. I kind of sit on the edge of Georgia and Florida. So I have the best of all three worlds. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, Zipporah, we had, I, well, I personally had the uh, opportunity to meet you several years ago. You were here in Indianapolis. And one thing that I really noticed about you was your enthusiasm. Uh, it was basically, it was what I, what I call contagious. <laughs> and um, you just seem to be that type of person to me. So I'm excited about your being our guest. Tell us a little bit about you, about, you know, your, your childhood, just a little bit about you, Zephora. Ooh, now, Florence, you asked one of my hardest questions, because talking about me is probably the hardest thing that uh, <laughs> I'm ever faced with. Um, so uh, I guess I'll tell you that um, I actually have a juvenile, well, I, I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis when I was like uh, three years old. And um, I went through that process, and around the age of six, um, I did, developed a detached retina in my right eye. And so I really haven't had much vision in my right eye um, most of my life, so about almost 40 years now. And so I just kind of lived life having um, my left eye, and uh, I did everything um, that normal I guess everyday kids would do. Um, I was a tomboy in the beginning. Um, I rode bikes. I, I, you know, skateboards. Anything that was, um, as my my mother used to say, dangerous. <laughs> uh, I pretty much uh, tried to do. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be placed in uh, regular elementary schools that had, um, I guess, um, classes or uh, places that I can go to get anything enlarged if I needed it. Um, I was mainstream. However, my first uh, school experience was outside of my actual neighborhood. Um, around the age of, I say about 15, I started having uh, issues with my left eye. I guess I was straining a lot because I was primarily using that one. And um, I developed glaucoma. And so I had to have a shunt put in my left eye to drain the fluid. After that was done, I pretty much had pretty good vision. I was able to read regular print and everything like that until around the age of 24. And at that time, I developed a blood clot in my left eye, which uh, immediately squeezed the nerve in my eye, uh, killing that nerve. So um, that lasted literally probably about two weeks from the finding of the blood clot to no sight at all. So I have um, no light perception at all at this time. And I've been blind for 21 years now. Well, me and you have something, you and I have something in common because I've been blind for 21 years now. And um, as of the end of June, uh, 2020. So um, that, that is a journey right there. Oh, so. Yeah. So uh, now with your education now, uh, did you, you graduated from high school, did you uh, any do any post-secondary? Um, yes, now my educational um, journey is just as, um, I guess, comical as my traveling journey of me moving from town to town. Um, I did finish high school. Uh, I went to college and shortly after I started college, because I just knew, my, my father had told me all my life that um, I like to argue my point down, so I was going to be a lawyer. So <laughs> I had plans on becoming a lawyer, and um, I, I, was, I got pregnant with my first daughter. And so being, uh, I said, well, I'm, I'm pregnant. Uh, I can't go to school. So I, I stopped going to school at that time until she got older. And I decided, well, I have a child. I'm going to get something quick. And I decided since I was good with numbers, I was gonna be an accountant. And almost I had, I guess, a semester to go and the school closed down and I found out that they weren't even accredited. So I couldn't transfer any of my credits there. 
So <laughs> I was like, okay, well, this is, uh, it's not meant for me to have an education. And um, I then had my second daughter. And when she got a little older, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to try this school thing one more time. And I went back to uh, college. Um, I was in Columbus, Georgia at that time. I had moved to Columbus, Georgia, and I was going to Columbus State University. And uh, that is when I was walking across campus and dropped my book on the ground, bent down to pick it up, and came up seeing nothing but red. That was the sign of the blood clot. And so I, I went blind two weeks later. So I said, well, I don't know how to do school blind. So I had to quit again. And um, of course, uh, that drive and determination, I am definitely going to uh, go to school. So finally, after I said, okay, I need to learn how to be blind. And so I went to Daytona School for the Blind. Um, didn't finish, but I learned that I needed to build my skills. And then I decided to go back to college. Um, I did complete uh, a communications degree, um, associates. I began um, college uh, to become a gerontologist uh, at University of South Florida. Um, I had a a semester to go and um, my nephew was uh, in an accident and uh, was paralyzed. And uh, I decided at that time that um, he needed me and I decided to go back to California so that I can, you know, uh, be a strength for him. And um, I'm glad I left when I did because a couple of months later he passed away. So, um, that led me, you know, to, okay, there's nothing for me in California, and I decided to move to Nevada from there. So right now, I'm currently deciding that I am going to go back to school because um, although I've done so much around um, the community, uh, everybody wants to see that piece of paper. So um, I've decided that I am going to go back and get that piece of paper. So I'll probably be enrolling um, back into college soon. Um, in the meantime, I did go through and do some business classes and I became a part of the um, Randolph Shepherd program. Uh, I was a licensed vendor. Um, I, well, I, I was a vendor in Las Vegas for a year. Um, I ran a business for a year. I just shut that down. Um, and last year when I decided to come out to Alabama, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Wow. Sephora, you yes. are a very interesting young lady. <laughs> and, you know, I mentioned earlier about your enthusiasm. I mean, it's definitely contagious, and so is your determination. I love that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your, your journey is, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's unique. It is, it is your life, your reality. And it seems that, you see each, uh, I want to say each hurdle, as I, I would like to call it, and you get over it and you keep moving despite. That says a lot about you. Uh, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and talking now, about um, moving, um, we're going to have to move on to our break. Oh, so okay. <laughs> once we come back, we'll move back into this discussion. So we're going to take a short pause and we'll be right back with the, the reality of Ms. Sephora Jones. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. With my failing eyesight, I'm not able to read regular newspapers and I'm not able to keep up with obituaries. I've been a homemaker all of my life, but since my vision has failed, I wish I could read my favorite magazine. Have you heard of the NFB Newsline? 
Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. We want to welcome you back to this edition of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline show. And today we have our very special guest, uh, a lady that's well-traveled and well-versed, Miss Sapora Jones. Um, we were talking a little bit about education and uh, vocational rehabilitation services. And what I see here is that you and Florence both have some of the same um, travels um, uh, with education and with vocational rehab. Would you guys want to just chat about that for a minute? Sure. Um, I, I would love to. Now, Sephora, you know, I listened to you, uh, your conversation earlier with your, oh, your, your journey with education. And uh, it sounds like you know, while they they were in somewhat challenges, but it seems like you know you kind of bounce back so easy. Now, what would you consider to be your biggest challenge, Zipporah? Or do you have any challenges? Well, I tell you one thing, Florence, it has not been easy. <laughs> um, I want to say in the beginning, um, a lot of my my challenges. Uh, once I lost my sight and went back to school, um, my biggest challenge it was technology honestly and truly because um you know technology getting my books i i was like i said i was blessed and in so many ways um i had you know great people behind me but um you know to access blackboard you know back when i was in school um it wasn't accessible with jaws so mm -hmm. literally my man my kids you know, they would sit down with me sometimes with some of my homework and read to me what was on the screen that the things that Jaws wouldn't read. Um, you know, I had issues with uh, a teacher, one of my Spanish teachers. Uh, she, she didn't, she wanted to kick me out of her class because she felt like I was cheating because I had a note taker. Um, she didn't want me to have a note taker. She didn't want anyone to read um, the test to me. I literally had to go to the dean on that one because. Um, she refused to let me have uh, someone from the uh, department of the blind services in the school to assist me with uh, reading the test for me. So um, I've definitely had challenges when it comes to education. All right. Okay. Now, now you mentioned with school. Now let's say even even outside of school. What has been your experience with um, services that are available for us uh, students, for instance, vocational rehab services? Now, as far as vocational rehab, um, sometimes they're great people. <laughs> but um, one of my biggest issues I've always had with vocational rehab is what they feel that blind people should be doing. Um, yes, the career that they feel blind people should go into. I'm not going to say anything against um, social work. I think that's a great field. I thought about going into it myself, but that is probably one of the leading um, programs that they guide. I'm not going to say force, but they guide visually impaired people or women. I, I want to really say women, visually impaired women into going into it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the thing about it, I believe, uh, in, well, in my opinion, I, I believe that they look at each one of us uh, as what they think we can do. They have this perception mm -hmm. of what they believe blind people are capable of achieving. <laughs> and so we call it, and, uh, and, that's, and again, it's no put down for those who are interested in social work. But as I see it, it's those Again, those low expectations, you know, yes. uh, what they think we're capable of doing because they don't know the poor, what they mm -hmm. don't know. They just don't. Exactly. Exactly. And, and see, that's, that's one of the things that um, I actually, you know, really try to get out. Um, like for right now with me doing my podcast, my, one of my things 
is showing the different sides of visual impairment and what other people are doing besides what they see as the norm. You know, yes, it's ma'am. not just the social workers. It's not just the, the psychiatrists. It's not just the customer service representative, um, the, you know, the legal. It's, it's all kind of areas. You know, people are owning their own businesses. People are doing all kinds of things. And vocational rehab really needs to get on board with allowing people to, you know, work within their own passions and what's in them and stop trying to cultivate and make them be something that they're not. Exactly, exactly. As this non-traditional student, as this non-traditional person, as um, one would would consider us to be uh, traditional, but you are that non-traditional person. now, speaking of your, you know, your podcast, your passion, because I, I heard that. I heard that passion when you just spoke about your uh, podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, honestly, you know, I've been um, through all my journey since I've lost my sight, you know, trying to figure out things, um, how to, you know, take care of my children, how to um, go to school how to get employment, all those things that we had to basically figure out 20 something years ago um, because there was no, you know, big uh, YouTube channels and, you know, social media, all that stuff wasn't available to us. And so, um, you know, I had a network of friends that we bounced things off of. And so over the years, I've been doing that with other people. And since I moved back to Alabama, I didn't have those people that I was normally working with. And I've been trying to find a platform to you know, just share information, um, to give people that are either going um, blind or due to you know diabetes or just an accident or you know um, any any event in your life that causes you to lose your sight or that you've been blind all your life but your parents are sheltering you, you know, just to show you that there's another side of blindness. It's not what you see in all the organizations. Um, it's just average people doing average things, but um, I just highlight it. You know, I interview uh, people in the blind community that are partially sighted, high, you know, highly partials, uh, totally blind, whatever it is that you're doing. If you have a story that you want to share, I um, give you a platform to share that story, you know, just so that we can share information because, um, you know, like my kids used to say, sharing is caring. So (laughs) yes, ma'am. No, I care about the next generation of visual impairment. And, you know, just because technology is great right now and the advancements are great, you know, um, there are still people that, you know, aren't tech savvy and they need those old um, skills and tools on how to label things or how to figure out what their clothing is because they don't use um, the, the scanners or the technology that we use with IRA and all that other stuff because they're still old school. You know, so we have to teach them the rubber band method or um, how to learn Braille so that they can label their their canned goods or their clothing and stuff like that. All those skills are still needed, you know. Um, And I I agree wholeheartedly with you on that as well. Uh, I know we're going to be running short on time here. Um, And I agree with you on that because there's so many other things that the National Federation of the Blind is doing and uh, such legislations that we have on there is uh, is like Access Technology Affordability Act uh, Mm -hmm. that we were talking about uh, having um, uh, the access to uh, the technologies. Uh, We are asking our members and individuals around the country to contact their congressman uh, so that they can get on board uh, so we can get these uh, this legislation passed through Congress so that blind people and uh, can have access to this technology that is very expensive to us as yes. we have a 75 um, uh, percent unemployment rate and mm-hmm. then as you were just talking about one out of every 10 individuals uh, really have access to the technology you know the tools that we uh, those of us that are in the blind community that have um, been introduced to that technology, but there's still out of one out of every 10 individuals that don't have uh, Mm -hmm. uh, access. And then there's another one called AIM, uh, Access Information Materials Act. Um, 
which we are also wanting our congressmen to uh, look at. So there's a lot of initiatives, and I'm really glad to hear that you both are working really diligently. Um, and I'm going to take, we're going to take a short pause right quick, and we're going to come right back, back with the conclusion of our show. So stay tuned. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. Wow, I scored a touchdown when I found sports on NFB Newsline. I enjoy reading TV guide listings on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind. We read NFB Newsline. It's free. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduced the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read. Welcome back to the conclusion of our show with Ms. Sapora Jones. I know that you've learned a lot and we're gonna have her back on our, her, our show because she has so much more to share with us. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, Zipporah, how can people access your podcast? Well, um, the podcast is called Talking Blind and you can basically reach it from Google, um, Apple, uh, Spotify, Overcast, and other um, podcasting platforms. Um, if you're using Siri to say, hey, you know who, um, play Talking Blind, <laughs> and it'll play it. You know, as I say on my podcast, you know, my blindness does not define who I am. I am so much more, and I am looking forward to sharing so much more with uh, the listeners. So anybody that's interested in sharing their story with me, please get in touch with me at Talking Blind 2020 at gmail.com. So there you have it, everyone. And we want to thank you all for joining us this week. And Florence and I will be back with you next week. So take good care and God bless you. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want. <laughs>